guys. How are you? Welcome. My name is Paul Brayshaw and my wife Frances here. We'd like to welcome you to our backyard. We appreciate you all being here. We uh, tried to clean up everything, so uh, but just watch your step. You never know. There could be a, a fresh one out there. But uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> So welcome. Uh, 36 years ago, I was born with severe factor 9 deficiency, hemophilia. I lack a specific clotting factor in my blood to make it clot. Um, and it's been a, a bit of a challenge over the years. Um, in uh, 2006, I reached a lifetime cap after three years. I was uh, trying to figure out what to do, whether I should go on uh, a disability policy, change jobs, or move states. Uh, fortunately, my employer came through and was able to cover my health care costs, but it was a significant stress for me and my wife. Um, we had an opportunity to uh, uh, have this employer take care of us, which, which made the world of difference. Uh, the problem with hemophilia, 90% of the costs are associated with the clotting factor, the medications I take. So it's been, uh, that's really where uh, I drive up health care. And it's important to have a, a policy that will cover that. Uh, you know, when there's um, uh, capitation on plans and other things, it doesn't necessarily make my health better. It actually makes me uh, worse and more expensive. So it's been something that uh, I've had to work through. Fortunately, the Affordable Health Care Act is uh, going to remove some of those uh, burdens and remove the shackles. Really, I won't have to depend on the job for uh, insurance anymore. So uh, the Affordable Health Care Act is welcome, and I expect that uh, it'll be make a big difference in my life and that of other people who are affected. So uh, with that, I'd like to uh, thank you again for being here, and I'd like to introduce President Barack Obama. Thank you for being here, sir. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Well, it is great to see you. Thanks all uh, for taking the time to be here. I know it's a little warm under the sun, uh, so if anybody at some point wants to shift their uh, chairs into the shade, uh, I'm fine with that. Uh, I won't be insulted. Um, I, I want to uh, just uh, make a couple of acknowledgments uh, of, of people who are here. Uh, first of all, I've got the Secretary of Health and Human Services, so she's charged with implementing uh, the Affordable Care Act. Kathleen Sebelia, she's doing a great job. Former governor of Kansas, former insurance commissioner, knows all about this stuff. Uh, we're very proud to have her on the team. Uh, somebody who helped to champion uh, the, the kinds of reforms and, and, and patients' rights that we're going to talk about here today. Uh, Congressman Jim Moran is here. Thank you so much, Jim. Uh, and Falls Church Mayor uh, Nader uh, Baruch, uh, I was just mentioning... Uh, uh, Baruch uh, means uh, uh, blessings in Hebrew, uh, one who's blessed, and uh, Barak means uh, the same thing. So he and I were right there. Uh, and, uh, and I know he feels blessed to, to be the mayor of this, the, this wonderful town. Um, you know, when I came into office, obviously we were confronted with a historic crisis, uh, the worst financial crisis since the Great Depression, uh, we had lost 4 million jobs in the six months before I was sworn in, and we lost eight, almost 800,000 the month I was sworn in. Uh, obviously, the economy has been uppermost on our minds, and I had to take a series of steps very quickly to make sure that we prevented 
the country from going into a second Great Depression, that uh, the financial markets were stabilized. We've succeeded in doing that, and now the economy is growing again. Uh, but it's not growing as fast as it needs to. Uh, and you still have millions of people who are unemployed out there. Uh, you still have hundreds of thousands of people who've lost their homes. Uh, there are, there's a lot of anxiety and there's a lot of stress out there. And so, so much of our focus day to day is trying to figure out how do we just uh, make sure that this recovery that we're slowly uh, on starts accelerating in a way that helps folks all across the country. But when I ran for office, uh, I ran not just in anticipation of a crisis. I ran because middle class families all across the country were seeing their security eroded. Partly because between the years 2001 and 2009, wages actually went down for the average family by 5%. We had the slowest job growth of any time since World War II. Uh, the Wall Street Journal called it the lost decade. And part of the challenge for families was is that even as their wages and incomes were flatlining, their costs of everything from college tuition to health care was skyrocketing. And so what we realized was we had to take some steps to, to start dealing with these underlying chronic problems that have confronted our economy for a very long time. And health care was one of those issues that we could no longer ignore. We couldn't ignore it because the cost of health care has been escalating faster than just about anything else. And I don't need to tell you all that. Even if you have health insurance, you've seen your copayments, your premiums skyrocket. Even if you get health care from your uh, employer, that employer's costs have skyrocketed, and they're starting to pass more and more of those costs onto their employees. More people don't get health care from their employers. And uh, in addition, what you were seeing was that at the state level and at the federal level, the costs of health care because people weren't getting it on the job and were trying to get it through the CHIP program or Medicaid or disability or what have you, all those costs were driving our government bankrupt. I mean, anybody who's out there who's concerned about the deficit, the single biggest driver of our deficit is the ever-escalating cost of health care. So it was bankrupting families, companies, and our government. So we said we had to take this on. And most of all, as I traveled around the country, I'd hear stories from families in, in every single state. You know, they had a child who had a pre-existing condition and they couldn't get health insurance. Or uh, they thought they had insurance, only to find out that in the fine print there was some sort of lifetime limit of the sort that Paul described. They bump up next uh, against it and suddenly uh, they're out of luck and potentially going to lose their home or lose whatever savings they have because uh, the insurance that they thought they were getting uh, wasn't going to fully cover them. Some people will tell me, would tell me stories about how just as they got sick, the insurance company would have gone through their form and saw some innocuous mistake and just dropped their coverage because they hadn't listed in some extreme cases, I've, you know, we had folks who, you know, had uh, a gallbladder, you know, problem uh, 15 years ago that had nothing to do with the sickness that they were now experiencing, but the insurance company said, ah, you forgot to list that, and so we're going to drop you from your insurance. Uh, I met young people all across the country who, uh, starting off in life, getting their first job, weren't getting health insurance, and couldn't stay on their parents' policies. So the, the amount of vulnerability that was out there was horrendous. Uh, and, and what I said uh, to myself and what I said to my team was, even as we were dealing with this big crisis, immediate crisis, uh, with respect to the economy, we've got to start doing something to make sure that ordinary folks who are feeling insecure because of health care costs, that they get some relief. So the, the reason we're here today is that thanks to outstanding work by people like Jim, thanks to outstanding implementation by 
uh, folks like Kathleen, we are now actually able to provide some help to the American people. Essentially, part of the um, part of the Affordable Care Act that we can implement right now and will take effect. Is it today or tomorrow? Tomorrow. See, Francis knows <laughs> that we can that that will take effect tomorrow. Uh, is the the most important patient's bill of rights that we've ever seen in our history. And let me just tick off some of the things that are going to be the case starting tomorrow. Number one, Paul already mentioned, uh, the issue of lifetime limits. That is not going to be the rule anymore after tomorrow. If you've got a policy, you get sick, the insurance company covers you. Number two, pre-existing conditions for children. Children who have pre-existing conditions are going to be covered. Number three, we're going to make sure that if young people uh, don't have health insurance through their employer, that they can stay on their parents' health insurance up to the age of 26, which is obviously a huge relief for a lot of parents who are seeing their young people just coming out of college and not being able to get insurance. You're going to be able to make sure that uh, the insurance company doesn't drop you because of an innocent mistake on your insurance form. They, uh, the, the, this rule of rescission, they are not going to be able to drop you uh, arbitrarily, which gives you more security. Number four, you're going to be able to choose your doctor uh, and not have to uh, go through some network in an emergency situation as a consequence of these rules. So it gives customers more choice and more options. There's so many good things about this, I may have forgotten one. Kathleen, anything else? Right. And preventive care. I knew there was one more. Preventive care uh, will now be offered under your policy, which over the long term can actually save people money because you get diagnosed quicker. So all these things are designed not to have government more involved in health care. They're designed to make sure that you have basic protections in your interactions with your insurance company, that you're getting what you paid for, that, that you have some basic measures of protection uh, in interacting with the health care system, which means that you're not going to go bankrupt, you're not going to lose your house if, heaven forbid, uh, you end up having an accident, and you're able to get the uh, quality care that you need. Now, obviously, there are a whole host of other things involved in the health care uh, uh, reforms that we initiated. Small businesses, four million of them, are going to get uh, uh, a huge tax break if they start providing health insurance uh, to their employees. Uh, we've got measures that make sure that Medicare, uh, the life of Medicare, is extended. And, in fact, we just got a report today that uh, the uh, Medicare Advantage program that we have have modified and, and scrutinized more carefully, uh, that, uh, in fact, uh, rates are going to be lower for that than they were before. I just met with state insurance commissioners from all across the country. They are newly empowered to look after consumers. And uh, I'll just give you one example. In North Carolina, uh, in part because of the new leverage that insurance comp commissioners have, uh, the insurance commissioner there was able to get a $125 million rebate for 200,000 customers in North Carolina, and they are seeing the lowest inc uh, rate increases ever. All this is going to lower premiums. It's going to make health care more affordable. It's going to give you more security. That's the, the concept behind uh, what we're implementing. Uh, but uh, rather than me do all the talking, I want to make sure that some people who uh, have struggled in the past with the health care system uh, have uh, an opportunity to tell their story because basically the reason we did this was uh, because of the stories I had heard from folks like you all across the country. And I want to make sure that uh, a couple of you have a chance to, to tell your stories before uh, I take some questions. So we're going to start with Dawn. Where's Dawn? Dawn's right here. Uh, Dawn's already got her own mic. <laughs> Introduce yourself, Dawn, and, and tell us a little, uh, little about yourself and, and uh, your situation. Thank you. I'm Dawn Josephson from Jacksonville, Florida, and I've been a self-employed entrepreneur since uh, 1998. During that time, majority of those years, I didn't even have insurance because it was simply too expensive. 
In 2006, my son Wesley was born. Little guy. This is Wesley, little 